out, but I can just do that on the editing side. Just take out the mandolin and the <laughs> voice. The whole thing, really. Alright, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to another edition of Hop Heroes, the show where we talk about our favorite drinks and our favorite heroes. I'm your host, Jordan Erith, and with me as always, we have talented artist and comic enthusiast, Gia Gonzalez. <laughs> Sup, Jay? Fuck's so funny, dog. Why are you, why are you laughing? You got beef? Yeah, I got, I got a lot of beef. <laughs> you got a lot of beef? Let's fucking squash it. Let's go. What's good? I, got, I, got, I can't even... <laughs> Oh, he's gonna, don't even look at Zach. <laughs> I can't. Zach's like a blowfish in an aquarium. <laughs> what the fuck he's doing over there? What are you doing? <laughs> Whatever he's doing is great audio. <laughs> it's great audio. It's such not, good a single, audio. not a single sound. Amazing audio. <laughs> hey, that's like that's for uh, that's for a uh, YouTube audience only. That's our uh, Patreon YouTube channel <laughs> you can, right there. You can only see it here <laughs> visually. We love your money though. Oh, uh, yeah. Just give us like $100 million every subscription. So now JR's got beef. Um, other than that, how you doing, JR? Pretty good. Yeah. Been a easy weekend so far, and it's Monday, so, you know, Monday. <laughs> Monday. Happy Monday. Yep. Monday. Yep. Boys. The, the recording to yeah. the evening time so we can get loose. So we can get Ooh. saucy. Ooh, ooh, saucy Monday. Saucy Monday. Yeah. That's, the new, that's the terrible name. Uh, and then we got our third host, Zach Barlow. How you living, son? What's up, dog? I'm freaking exhausted, bro. Yeah? Big let weekend? Me tell you about, let me tell you about the last 10 days of my life and everybody right. else. I'll see listening. you guys later. So both of our moms. Um, <laughs> uh, so last weekend, I went to Alaska to visit your ass. Landed Woo! on Monday. Tuesday... I had By the way, a, when uh, Zach left, before we get there, when Zach left, he was fucking hammered. I was taking him to the airport on my way to work, and I come back after work, and all of his stuff's still in my fucking bathroom. <laughs> Zach's razor. I literally had Zach's just, deodorant. Like, well, Zach's guess I gotta buy brand new stuff. But I watched you pack, so like he just left, left everything. So I just left with a bunch of your shit. <laughs> oh great, yeah. And your and Alicia's socks were like like stowed away in like a corner of a room that Marcy was just gathering up all weekend. So I have those too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was, so that was how I left. Landed on Monday. Tuesday was my birthday, so me and Alicia had a one-on-one dinner that Mark just showed up to. My homie Mark just, <laughs> like, she had, like, plans, and Mark's just like, What's up, bro? It's your birthday! And we're just like, all right, guess we're having dinner with the three of us now. Let's go. <laughs> birthday crashed your fucking day. Yeah, birthday dinner crash. Classic Mark. Then we had a birthday dinner with her family on Wednesday, then one with my family on Thursday. Then Thursday night, I had family fly in from L.A., then they stayed over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we just fucking raged all weekend. And now today's Monday, and oh, it's just been crazy, Jay. It's been a crazy time, bro. It's a crazy time in our life. You gonna be okay? You gonna make it? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's just, I have so many people in my life that love me and want to spend my birth time no, with me. No, it's a blessing. No, I know. I, it's... <laughs> It's a blessing, and I'm I'm very blessed, and I, it's been a fun time, and I love everybody. But I also like the introvert in me is like, just fucking tortured. I just I would love just a night, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. I feel you. It's it's all it's all fun on paper, and then when you actually look at like your schedule, and it's just like it gets exhausting. Blocks, like, blocks, blocks, block, block. Next yeah. week, block, block, block. Yeah. And with us, when it's blocked, it's not just like a casual like, okay, let's go get some dinner, come back home, go to bed at a reasonable time. It's like, all right, let's rage, let's black out. Yeah. Let's, Go to bed at like, four. There's, there's, there's an at expectation six. of me, you know. Like I can't just show up and drink water. Like I, I have, a, I have a reputation to Bro, keep up. You yeah. Know what I'm if your hand is not <laughs> holding an alcoholic beverage, who the fuck are you, and where do you get off? That's not the Zach right. Barlow. Exactly. Right like it's like I got to perform, bro. I got to take absent shots, or people are disappointed. I, I don't. It's a, it's a balance of want to and, and need to. But yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, <laughs> And uh, then we got our guy in the chair, my boy, the stashed man. Actually, he's got the beard going today, but uh, Vinny McBroom. I just have it shaved. Like, it's still, yeah, you got to get that beard out of there, bro. It's getting it's, in the way. It's still there. Don't worry. Mm, yeah, get that nice close-up. Mm. I'm going to up yeah. my quality just so I can count every fucking mustache hair on that face of yours. <laughs> seven. There's seven of them. I can count them all. <laughs> How you been, Vin? Uh, yo, doing well. I mean, yeah, 
we're recording on a Monday, so it's a little weird. It's late at night, so our screens are a little darker. I mean, yeah. or, I mean, Jordan's in Alaska, so it's daylight all day. It's or fucking something. I know, day. seriously. The sun's like <laughs> in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest yeah. of us are. It's like it's really noon over there. Yeah, but, I no, just I'm woke like, up. Yeah. I'm excited for this episode. This this was an interesting read. That's all I'll say for now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was. It was. So today we're doing uh, a vision story arc, little worse than a human, and <clears throat> a little worse than a human, a little worse than a man, a little worse than a little man. worse than a man, a little worse than a man. That's right. And uh, it's it's an interesting arc. It's I've never been a vision guy. I don't know if any of us can say that we're. Vision heads. No, nope. uh, I don't know if there's one out there. To be honest, what do you think about somebody that comes up? You're like, yo, what's your favorite hero? And he's like, bro, Vision. The How many people? I like feel like killed? I'm like Loki, like finding a way out of the conversation almost immediately. How I'm many? Like, oh yeah, dude, crazy. How many children? Hey, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, like, I gotta go. So you like go to playgrounds and watch children, or <laughs> wear the skin of other people, or I don't know. <laughs> what's your What's your Tuesday look like? Yeah, dude, I don't, I don't know who the fuck likes Vision like that, but so in this story arc, first off, shout out to Nick, uh, Vinny told me he, he he gave us this story arc to check into, and it, it, it does go yeah, into yeah, play Nick. with. So uh, Nick's that guy <clears throat> that we just described. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue, uh, Jay. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what no, a loser! What I, a I'll nerd say. who likes Vision. Anyway, shout out to the homie Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got kids in his basement. <laughs> I'll say this. Uh, this came out in uh, 2015, I believe, right? 20, uh, I think it was 2016 so he, in June. He was part of. He did that. Um, I don't. I think it was like Marvel Now or something. It was the whole subscription where you just get all the Mar- new Marvel stuff. Right. And so he got this back in 2015, and we were we were still working together. And he was like, "Man, you got to read this. It's really good. It's so." different than most marvel comics so i think you'll like it you gotta read it and you know it's honestly been bugging me for years to read this and i haven't read it yet <laughs> so I'll, once we needed something to fill in i was like hey let's do the vision you guys yeah so okay like, yeah. all right so so he's not a he's not a pedophile murderer serial killer he's just like no the vision the marvel. vision is definitely not his favorite superhero <laughs> he got i think he got it indirectly and then he was like pleasantly intrigued by what was he was reading exactly 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 yeah and and, and well, this arc is important because it does it is going to play into the wandavision uh disney plus wandavision show. there is a, yeah. a piece of it that's going to be into that so if you want to get into that and, and be prepared for it you can kind of read up on yeah. this arc yeah um um well let me let me just give you like let me just to put us all into one little spot of who vision is they wanted to to have vision be white his suit and that's how plain and boring vision was but they couldn't do it and because the ink and the printing at that time you couldn't it wouldn't work out so oh. vision was supposed to be an all white suited character like white and, like white skin and white yeah like white suit? everything like, like white suit yeah shit. so he's too boring yeah. to print like they, they couldn't. He was, he was, he was too boring to print, and they didn't want him to be green, and they didn't because of the Hulk, and they didn't want him to be blue because at that time the Atlanteans uh, were, uh, were hyped up, and so they they went with reds. Yeah, it's, it's. I like how he's just leftovers, and you know with the Stan Lee, I mean, everything's idea. good, but uh, <clears throat> okay. that's kind of how. No, that's so, yeah. Nice, that's neat. Nice take, Jr. That's why we pay you the big bucks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this is way past Jr.'s bedtime, so he's gonna struggle. Oh yeah, he's, he's fucking tired. tired. <laughs> it's a Monday at five thirty p.m. Me and Jordan are about to get turned. Zach's too messed up to do anything, and Jr. is about to take a nap. Like he's yeah, to- we're about to get turned up because our welcome uh, to the Vision episode. Let's go. I actually, uh, <laughs> I can't remember what we were gonna do for our beverage breakdown, um, but. Oh, f- guys, who did this? Oh, <laughs> who fucking put just this Smirnoff ice, ice directly in front of me on my podcast desk? God damn it. <laughs> oh, get on that knee, baby. Yes. Get on that knee. Yes. He's doing his work clothes. Get in that right. knee. Get on that Straight from home. work. Salud. So for those of you listening, we're watching Jordan take one knee and kill... And ice. If we make him laugh while he just does this, he's Jordan, still listening to us. Man, no, it's too I should have thought. Man. I should have thought ahead. So fast. I should have hit him with the joke. Oh man, he's doing. <laughs> he did Wazoo proud right there. Oh yeah, dude. Shout out to Pullman. <laughs> that's uh. That's what's Pullman. Pullman. You still got it. You still got it, kid. <clears throat> Never lost it, baby. They still chant his name in the halls. Of <laughs> it's actually annoying at this point. It's like, just let me. Come on, let me live my life. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> oh does anybody, uh, do any of you guys have a great iced story? JR, you ever been iced? Do you know what iced is? No. All right. I'll, I want <laughs> Let me explain no. what being iced is with my <clears throat> very first time being iced. So it was my birthday. And I had some people over uh, for my birthday. Zach, you might have been there. It was a couple years ago at this house. I think it was the first birthday I had at the house I'm living at right now. But anyways. So uh, at the time, my sister-in-law's boyfriend comes in the door. And he has a gift. And it's all wrapped up and shit. And he's like a gift giver. Like just knowing him. So I was like, oh man, you got me a gift? I was like legitimately like stoked. Like, like no, touched. No way, man. You got a gift for me? You didn't have to do that. No one brought a gift. All right, cool, whatever. And it's like, I'm in the middle of the kitchen. Everybody's in there. And I'm like, <laughs> like Zach said, I'm like seriously touched. It was like, oh, man, <laughs> open it up. And it's just this baby laying there mm. with some gift wrap around it and stuff. Mm. And then everybody starts dying laughing. And I'm like, I don't know what's good. What's so funny? He gave me spirit off ice. Yeah, it sucks. Whatever. But like, what do I? They're like, no, you got to drop on one knee and chug it. It's just like kind of like what you're saying, Zach. It's your birthday, so you have expectations. So of course, <laughs> you get on one knee and chug that bitch, just like Jordan did right now. Except Jordan did it like a champ. I was like squirting well, out the nose and shit. <laughs> well, that's a big <laughs> fucking one. Yeah. I, oh, I man. oh man, I got I got iced too many times in college, but there was one time where I came home <laughs> too many I, times. I was it was like a fucking Tuesday. And I was just in the library and shit. I came home to go to go to bed. I opened my door and somebody invested like sixty bucks into smear off ice because there was like <clears throat> thirty bottles across my floor that just spelled out "fuck you." It's <laughs> 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 just like, all right, cool. Um, so in ahead. that sense, did you just have to do one of them, or did you have to chug all of them? I went to bed, but <laughs> I was not going. Oh, you chug. just you, you just like. Just Stepped over that? And no. You're just like, I'm just going to not... I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. I fucking did one just to... to but I wasn't going to do 30 fucking smeared off ices. <laughs> no. Like dome. That's bad. It's just so much sugar. I mean, it's perfect. It's fitting for the episode because it's the most basic drink out there that has alcohol in it. And who's the most basic fucking hero out there? Mm-hmm. Vision. <laughs> um, have you ever been Ice Z? Uh, to be honest, uh, sorry to disappoint, but I can't really think of a... I don't think I have. Challenge That's accepted. not an invitation. Challenge like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm solid. I already know exactly what just happened. Jordan was just like, Roger that. Yeah. <laughs> mind. All I'll right. see you at your wedding at the podium. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, they're going to be like, and now the rings. And they go to pull out the rings. It's just like, hand Zach is smeared off ice. With a note God, from Jordan. I, just, I feel like I just sealed my fate. I should have just made a story up. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did this one time, bro. Like I was in college, bro, and then somebody handed me a Smirnoff, and I got on a knee and I did it. If that was the real Crazy. story, I would have made you do it again. Cause that's the worst <laughs> story. <laughs> somebody handed me a Smirnoff. Gotta fucking do it. Oh uh, 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 man. No, but just the journey to get to Smirnoff Ice today was a struggle. Cause the original. Yeah. Thing, the original idea we all thought of was Everclear, and we, we all agreed there's no way we were going to do that. Everclear then, will make its appearance on the show one day. And then the good old MD2020. Yeah, shout the- out to Bree with the great idea. Yeah, Fucking Brian had a genius. great idea to get some mad dogs and then search for like over an hour at all of the sketchiest corner stores you could possibly find in Tacoma and the east side. Which are hot spots for MD2020. Yeah, that's what I was really, thinking. Really put yourself in danger <laughs> for this show, away. you know? I was, dude, but they were everywhere growing up. Dude, Mad Dog Mondays, that was, that was the jam. Yeah. Just fucking get two Mad Dogs and black out. But then Jordan wanted to do Zima. <laughs> And that's also impossible to find. <laughs> yeah, dude. What? So these companies are just minutes. gone. Yeah. Zima made a comeback, though. But we scoured like heaven and earth in Washington, Alaska, and we couldn't find a Zima or a Mad Dog to save our lives. So, so this is like this is like the poorest substitute of all yeah. those. This is our consolation hey, prize. Smear yeah, but ice. it came up with a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. Um, so Smirnoff originated in 1833 in Russia by Peter Smirnov. Um, and uh, he actually pioneered the charcoal filtering process that they used to make the vodka. Um, <clears throat> was very famous in Russia. And then when he passed, uh, he passed it on to his son, Vladimir Smirnov, um, who kind of created, rose the, the company and the brand name to fame. Um, um, but he wasn't the most 
forward thinking businessman. They uh, they ran out a lot of they ran out of money quickly um, after they it was a quick rise and fall, and it had a lot to do with the economy over there. Um, and so he met a business partner in America, um, brought Smirnoff to the states, started brewing them over in uh, in Connecticut, and they boomed again. But it was a slow boom. And the biggest reason was watching, or the United States were uh, whiskey drinkers. So vodka in, in the early 1900s just wasn't a, a big deal. And so what they did is they started smel- selling Smirnoff as white whiskey. And basically says white whiskey and it's uh, unscented is what their, their description was. And then it started just fucking booming because Americans are fucking stupid. So we just started buying as white, white whiskey. Get <laughs> you drunk. And then all of a sudden it, 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 it took off again. And then... Um, they hit, again hit some financial turmoil and, and went under again and found some more investors. And then they found this French investor who wanted to change the name from Smirnov to Smirnoff with the two Fs. And so uh, that's where we have to know it today. And now uh, in the early 90s, they came out with Smirnoff Ice, which is the malt uh, beverage style. Um, kind of like, a was it Bortles and James, the original like wine cooler? I think it was Bortles and James. You guys remember those? They're like in like little like oval shaped like lava lamp looking bottles. Came oh, I do. Packs. I do. Bartles. Kind of like a, Bartles and like James. A, almost like a foil. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. That was like that. The fucking went out. No, just nothing came from that. Right. They, they were the yeah. famous ones. Fell off. And then Smirnoff Ice came to play and Zima and all this shit. And then Bartles and James was deuces. It's kind of like the seltzer kick we're going through now. Like all of a sudden seltzer's rise into fame. And White Claw is the first big one, but who knows if it's going to last. It might be the uh, the new Bartles and James. But yeah. Yeah, once Four Loco starts doing it, I feel like that's a not a good sign for like the, the industry as a whole. Once Loco gets involved, everybody's like, we should probably stop. This, <laughs> this has gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody brought our retarded, or sorry, mentally handicapped little brother to the party. And <laughs> now he's got Yeah, maybe we should just do something just else. Just call it quits. Uh, Loco's here. Cut uh, it. Cut it. Party's over. Not a good look. So, uh, so yeah, that's the that's the Smirnoff run, and that's uh, that's how icing became. Became, and I'm already feeling it. All right. What's it feel? What's it taste like, Jay? Um, that's a good point. It's give so me it's, a profile. It's got a natural lemon lime flavor, according to the label. Uh, it only has lemon on the label. I never would think lemon lime. Um, I'll tell you, it's just it tastes like sugary. It's actually fucking delicious, but it tastes like it is pretty good. It tastes like a really less carbonated Sprite. And a little, th- got, a little thicker. It's kind of ironic that Jr. decided not to drink in this episode because this would probably be his favorite drink. Oh, dude, Jr. would be such a basic bitch after tonight. No, man, Jr. This. wanted to drink. He wanted to try the MD uh, MD twenty twenty. Oh, well, oh, you right, said JR. it was e- easy to find, so dude, I go to I like know, you said. They go used to the be. They stupid used to literally be everywhere. liquor store. <clears throat> yeah, a teenager would give homeless people money, and they would go buy me MD twenty twenties. They well, all I can say is I had to ask the guy at the front counter who didn't speak a lot of English about MD2020. <laughs> and let's just say I'm okay with, uh, thank goodness I'm okay with getting out of my uh, comfort zone because <laughs> I got told no. <laughs> I got told no. I got told no. <laughs> no. And fuck you for asking if we saw yeah. MD2020. Fuck it. He's like, oh, buy, buy Miller Lite. That's good for you. Why <laughs> he's telling you <laughs> that's good for you? See, I, you're like, uh, no, dude. I'm looking for MD 2020. Don't tell me how to live my life. Yeah, also <laughs> that orange jubilee, son. Yeah, Brianna asked a couple <laughs> clerks about where the MD 2020 was, and they could. They, a couple of them just laughed. God what? Damn. They just responded with a laugh. Should they, we just have a moment? <laughs> Do we need to have a moment for Mad Dog? Is it? Is it done? <laughs> I'm gonna pour, pour some Smirnoff on the ground for Mad Dog. I know, bro. It's gonna be sticky as fuck. So be careful. Yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah, I got, a, I got a dog. It's okay. <laughs> Dude, I hope you got two so you could ice Brie later. <laughs> Just fucking sneak in a pillowcase or something. It's a great way to start your day. And then as you ice her, just be like, this wouldn't have happened if you found the MD. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your fault. Uh, I always thought Smirnoff tasted like uh, uh, carbonated alcohol lemonade. I mean, yeah. basically. It's, yeah. it's, it's, like simi- a, it's similar to a Mike's Hard. It's like a Mike's, but... but yeah. 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 It's just... It's a lot of sugar... And so much. It's it's good to have like one, but I'm sitting here with a six pack, and I guarantee you it's going to be done here soon, and I'm going to be feeling awful tomorrow. Well, I got yep. I got the pint the pint bottle. I didn't go for the six pack. Well, I guess that's the difference between me and you. You know, <laughs> I'm also <laughs> how much sugar is on this. I'm an idiot. That's the difference. 
I'm really fucking stupid. All right. So I think it's time where we uh, sit crisscross applesauce and listen to JR's story time as he goes into the Vision arc. Story time. Ah. All right. So Vision. So this story arc comes... Uh, it's not after, right after the House of M, but it's come after um, where him and, and Wanda are divorced now. Um, she did some bad things, and that's where the House of M story arc came from. Wanda's um, if anybody Scarlet knows. Witch... For those of you know, Scarlet Witch, yeah, who Wanda is? Yes, Scarlet Witch. If you don't know who Wanda and Scarlet Witch are, I, you're listening to the wrong podcast again. Well, I'm sure they know Scarlet Witch, but everybody knows Wanda. I mean, come on, Wanda. They're Everybody's pro- they're, they're probably listening to this to get educated, bro. You got that's the these are we're Wanda. probably getting like 90 percent Smirnoff fans listening to this episode. So just, <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep that in mind, okay? All right, fine. Um, <laughs> So chairs so fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've lost my train of thought now because you a holes. <laughs> uh, all right, past his bedtime, man. I yeah, know. I'm tired. Um, so uh, <laughs> Vision, after his divorce from Wanda, he he wanted a, a family. He wanted a, a a bit of normalcy, um, outside of his his life at, as an Avenger. So what he and if anybody knows how Vision it was created, he's he's created by um by Ultron and he used the brain waves of w- Wonder Man. So he's got this like he is a they call him a, a synthesoid and he's basically he is kind of an android or a robot, but he has um human pat human brain patterns that run through him. And so that's what he created with uh his family and he wanted to live in suburbia and he wanted to have kids who went to school and uh so that's what he he created he created his wife virginia and daughter and son viv and vin and you know the story goes into a a bit of a turmoil um dark dope just to create your family if you're bored so yeah i'm I'm gonna create a wife and kids could be super smart yeah and and kind of creepy at the same time it's like getting a bunch of blow-up dolls and (laughs) put them in your house (laughs) <laughs> what's and wrong what's with funny that? Is that in the story what's wrong with that? people weren't cool with it like like the avengers he, like there's one line in the in the arc in the first volume where the avengers like made him move out or something because they didn't think like the fact that they were that he was creating other essentially synthesoids or whatever yeah a few of them disapproved but some of them were like you deserve your freedom I think it's. I don't think it was like all the Avengers. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a controversial that. AI topic. We'll get into later. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> mm. but um, but yeah, that's basically the synopsis. And he wanted to have, uh, like I said, normalcy. He wanted to be just like everybody else, you know. So he created what the typical family, right? A uh, uh, wife and two kids, a, a son and a daughter, and later Twins. on in the story. Yep, twins, and he and later on in the book he created a dog, which is part of a the part of the story that's pretty important. Um, but yeah, that's the synopsis of the story. It's a it's a it's not it's not a hard read. It's a great read. It's an easy read. But it's the first yeah. time I read it on digital copy too, by the way. So that was a little different for me. What'd you think? First, um. I definitely don't feel the 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 connection as much. Uh, it was I read it quick, so I don't know if that's because of what the story is or because it's digitally. I mean, it's the same panels, um, but I think I, I think I take a longer time looking at the art when I have the book in front of me. You know, like I yeah. take a longer staring <clears throat> at the pages. So. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that there's there's positive negatives. It's kind of funny you did a digital read on a digital character like a. AI, AI I character. thought that was ironic. Uh, I, I think that, that the fun. benefit is that you get panel for panel. Like you can't see the next panel until you swipe. So your everything is like new. Like on a book, yeah. you can see the whole page. You kind of you can like accidentally flip forward and see somebody dying. It's like oh fuck, you gotta read back. Like that doesn't happen in digital, which is kind of cool. But at the same time, I do like to stare at a panel and kind of see everything that goes along in it. And it's hard to do on a fucking little unless you like I do it on my phone. You can do it on a Kindle and everything. But yeah, it's just different. I, I like to feel the book in my hands. The cool thing about digital too is sometimes when you like turn the page, if you will, and a big it's a big panel, but they'll zoom in on the talk box to yeah, give you and then you'll to zoom give, again and, and then it'll, it'll zoom, zoom out. out and it gives you that effect, you know, because it's, sh- it's like the hardest thing for me with print, which I love print, it's all behind me, but like is exactly what Jordan said. You turn the page and you look at the page ahead by accident, 
and you see that character's head being lobbed off, and you're like, <laughs> fuck, well, I can't get that image out of my mind as I'm trying to read what builds up to, <laughs> to it. It's like, like, well, we'll see you. how this happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. we, lo- we support local comic shops, too. So Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think the print, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, with Zach and, and the comic that we were that we're doing, I mean, you can see we have to do, for the page to be effect, like, you got to get the whole page in there, you know, and you got to get, sometimes you can't just do that panel per panel as, as we've noticed, but it, I, I did, I did kind of want to read this in digital, obviously being vig, vision and, um, I, I wanted to, to see how it was and. It was interesting. It, it, I guess it still got the effect of the story across, is what I should say. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like, it's nothing like any other comic I've read. It's, it's, it's you, you think of Vision going to the suburbs, and it's like, God, kill me now. But it's much darker than that, and it, it's kind of like a, a take on AI meets segregation. And there's so many different things you can pull from that. That will, you can relate to the current society, to past society, to America, to whatever you want. Um, but there's just there's a lot of layers of this, so I'm really, really excited to hear Zach's take on this whole story because I know that he's got his other podcast, Tectonic Shifts, which is all about AI, and he's also got the beneath the ink segment, beneath the ink segment, where he goes into the the, the layers here. So I'm sure Zach's got a lot to say. But um, before we go beneath the ink, you know, what was your take on the story, Z? Um, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I think that, um, I went in with pretty low expectations to kind of, we kind of touched on that in the very beginning of this episode. I mean, it's vision. Nobody really likes vision. And I honestly feel like that's a, mostly a product of like how he's represented in the MCU. I just low key, he bothered, like, he, I feel like he's my Loki? least liked character. No, low key, like <laughs> the, the character no jordan the, the character i just don't like the actor i don't like how he's always he seems to always be like a victim and he's just kind of annoying to me dude and fuck it's, uh, vix fuck vision in the mcu he he's such a bitch he has yeah, all these powers bitch. and he doesn't do a goddamn thing. yeah yeah he's a huge bitch and i hate his costume i hate how he looks i just i hate his voice like i just hate him i hate all of it so uh i had low expectations going into this but i i found myself being very and then and then like the first part of the the volume also is kind of like look at Vision and his family. Now he has a wife. Now he has two kids. He's in <laughs> suburbia. And I'm just like, if you would have pitched me on that, like, hey, you want to read a book about Vision with a nuclear family with a wife and two twins in a neighborhood? I'd be like, mm, nope. I'd rather gouge my eye out. Like that sounds <laughs> terrible. But it actually uh, was interesting. So I, it it went in a way that I just didn't expect, and so it kept me engaged and. So pleasantly surprised was my yeah. take. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of differences between the comic and MCU on the vision. And I think yes, um, for sure. That is a big deal because I, I never I never cared about vision ever. All the comics, I don't have one vision comic. All the Avenger comics I have don't have even vision's not even a part of them anymore. If he is, he's just sitting at the pant like at a computer saying, Hey guys, you know, more of a like a call center kind of guy. Um, and, uh, I mean, and some of the differences are, are pretty big. I mean, uh, Tony Stark didn't create vision, you know what I mean? The way he was portrayed, um, it was, he was created by Ultron, which Ultron was not even created by Tony Stark. He was created by Hank Pym, which is, you know, the first Ant-Man. Hey, yep. And so oh. hmm. there's a lot of that that goes into, in, into that. And I feel like the way that. They brought him into, I mean, it was rushed, obviously, in the MCU compared to the story, which you can't do. It was much more of a delay, you know, where he came out in 1968. That was that was a tough time in America, too. And for Stan Lee, he wanted to create a new character somehow to be different and to be kind of that whole... He talked about a little bit, you know, uh, about how he wanted Vision to be, you know, this new way of thinking and new way of, like, perceiving people as well. So it's kind of another avenue of doing that, um, and you didn't get that at all with with Vision in the movie. I mean, really, he was just uh, a consequence of Tony Stark's arrogance. Really, for me, I felt Vision was in yeah. the movies. And, yeah, and that's I think that's interesting um, because that was not great. All I run off of when I think of Vision is the is the movie Vision, and when you go into the comic Vision or even in this arc, you you see the struggle that he's constantly facing, and then him and his family in this arc. 
And it's like, you know, do I belong? But also what, uh, like how people around him react, like, is he accepted? Is it a he? Is it an it? It's, it's like, a, it's like this, this, it's almost interesting to like the vision is his name. Right. And it's like, I think the first, uh, first issue in the, in the volume one is vision into the future. And, and, and to go, what'd you say he was originated? JR 68? 68. To have that October kind of concept back in 68, like that is a vision into the future. Like how, how is the world going to react to AI when it has, you know, conceptual thought and, and emotion? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that makes yeah. me appreciate vision at least a little bit. And, and not only that though, um, but it, it, the fact that vision married Wanda, Scarlet Witch was, which she was a, a mutant. So there was kind of like that, um, like if anybody knows Star Trek, uh, that first kiss between Captain Kirk and no, exactly. No, how, how big of a deal was that back in that time? Right. Nerds. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck Take that as a compliment. You. And uh, you're fucking uh, sword of the king hanging on the wall behind you. <laughs> Prove it. Ah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Unblur your background. Huh? Unblur it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm blur that. Um, but yeah, I I think it, it was it was a vision to have vision by Stanley, <laughs> and I thought it was you know obviously uh, we've heard some really good some really um, disturbing stories about marvel and and disney and some of the things that you know i didn't ap- appreciate you know stan lee so i think there's a good moment to appreciate some of his his uh, effect on on actually the life of everybody at this moment in life so yeah that's one thing that marvel like we we do these weekly and we read so many different stories and everything that like it's we always talk about how it's a breath of fresh air when we get to do image or we get to do um you know dark horse or something just out of the the mainstream that's not the big marvel dc storylines but when we go to the the roots of the marvel storylines like there's so much originality there and so much like foundation that created everything that we know today that Mm -hmm. something like this makes me just helps me appreciate that because like i get so lost in like the marvel fucking drilled into your face and drilled into your head every single day with everything that's around us now sometimes it's just good to get a little breath of fresh air back to the roots to see like their original concepts were groundbreaking like yeah, just yeah, flat out. and and that you know that holds true because they've stood the test of time. Just the fact that they're drilled into us now is a tribute in itself to the originality and how groundbreaking they were when they first came out. Because you know if they weren't, then they would have just fallen to the wayside. But because they kind of hold this place in so many people's hearts over so many different generations, that's why they're still still here today. Yeah, it's different. I mean, Stan Lee's not running it. But the characters still resonate, so I feel like that kind of just goes to your point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, Jared. So walk us through the storyline a little bit. So, so Vision creates a family, goes to the suburbs, and there, there's one panel that I had saved that really uh, kind of like distinguished his his reasoning. I thought, and it basically says, "To assert as truth that which has no meaning is the core mission of humanity." The pursuit of an unobtainable purpose by absurd means is the way of freedom. This is my vision of the future, of our future. So, like, just what what happens in the storyline? Like, what's his goal? What the fuck is he doing? I mean... I, I think it's, he's very... Um, he's kind of... It's I, I think throughout the story, there's a little bit of an ego trip that goes on with him. But I think there's also a little bit of... of um, he just, I guess him not understanding the situation like a human being would and not understanding what he created. It's almost like the Frankenstein, you know, story a little bit, you know, where his, he's created these people who who wanted to live a normal life. And, he, you know, they built this house. There's actually a really good metaphor of how the story goes from uh, actually the, how the way the house looks, how, how in the beginning um, the house... And I was listening to some other podcasts and some other uh, uh, stuff on YouTube and how the house was very neat and clean. So, you know, came in, family moves in, neighbors come in. Hey, we want some cookies. This is normal, right? This is what we see every day. Um, come meet the family, meet the kids, meet, you know, check out the plant in the, you know, in the front, you know, talk about the plant, small talk, right? Not really getting to know your neighbor, just small talk. And so... I, for him, he this is kind of what he wanted. He wanted, uh, he he wanted his kids to enjoy the summer, 
like every other kid. He wanted his kids to go to school, enjoy the school, and not even thinking about what he's created, which is something different. People are going to stare. People are going to judge. People are going to be scared of them. And that's what I think Tom King was writing about. And throughout the story, it just keeps getting worse, 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 worse. And, you know, and all of a sudden, he's not realizing that the brain patterns that he's put into his wife and his kids are evolving and turning into something kind of scary. And they go down this rabbit hole of a kind of like a almost it kind of reminded me of a little bit of a serial killer situation, you know, like all of a sudden you're just going down this this you know this path of of destruction and the wife not understanding why and one of the creepiest things about the story was when when they were struggling like when viv got stabbed by um <clears throat> is it the grim reaper which was yeah. like this this very side story very like nobody even knows who he is he's a very b villain but the fact that they were on the news um, and that they were, there's a family, they were living as a family. He went after them and said, you're fake. You're not real. And tried to kill their family. And that kind of sparked the whole thing, kind of sparked the violence from, uh, uh, Virginia. And he was able to cut through the daughter. But one of the scary things that she kept saying was re she kept repeating a word, right? She kept being mother, mother, or she pink father. Mother. I can't remember which one. Mother. She, mother. mother. <clears throat> and. It was it was kind of a scary thing to read because she was scared, but was she supposed to be scared? Do you know what I mean? And this is kind of again was she programmed to be scared, or <laughs> right? It was kind of, yeah. it, but it was a scary moment, and um, so you know you go through this this uh, this traumatic experience, and how does how are we, how do you and I are supposed to react compared to the synthesoid? And she reacts completely the mother into a, a very vicious you know protecting her daughter just like anybody else smashed his head in violently no superpowers no it was all it was a, a emotion emotional filled action and she smashed his head in and then she lied about it and they talk about yeah. that in the book that's mm -hmm. yeah that's the domino that's that's where it starts and, and that's where it just that surprised me once once that once that started, like, well, there was a frame in the beginning when, like, this old couple walks over this to the door and they bring cookies, you know, and they're like, he's not going to want cookies. He's a robot. They don't eat cookies, yeah. yada, yada. <laughs> and then, like, it freezes and, like, the narrator, who is Wanda, I believe, is narrating the story, isn't she? No, or it's the, the it's, the, um, it's the witch that taught, taught Wanda, which is, like, oh, Madame okay. Agatha. Agatha, yep. that's right. So, and she's like, uh, at the end of the story the visions will set fire to their house and these, these two will perish or whatever. And like, then it just keeps going to like the story of like cookies and milk and shit. It's like fucking dark. All right. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is the game we're playing. And then, yeah, the grim reaper attacks the house, hurts the mom, really hurts the daughter. The mom murders him. And then instead of like going to the Avengers or going to the police, they're like, all right, your father can't know about this. Let's bury him in the backyard and never talk about it again. Kind of thing, which was yeah. an interesting reaction from a, Synthesoid, right? I mean, that kind of yeah. caught me off guard. Well, so I have a panel that I wanted to talk about right after the... She's, like, recounting the attack on her family. And there's a lot of lies in here, but there's, like, one thing... One panel that's true, and it's her talking about what she did after she realized her kids were, were hurt. And she talks... She's, and this is her narrating the panel, and she says, Vin's entire system was continuously rebooting. He shook with every revolution. I held him. Tried to show him that my body was not ex experiencing the problem. This appeared to counteract some of the effects. Like one thing that I noticed in this story is how like robotic they sound when they when they talk. They don't really use like emotional language or anything like that. And I think that's kind of like a trick from the writer. But what I found interesting in that panel is that even though these are synthesoids and they're computers, that is a very human thing to do. Like it's a very human thing to have somebody be hurt and then hold that person and just try to be close to that person to soothe them. But her justification for it is like very 
um, AI focus, like his system keeps rebooting. So I'm holding him to show him that my system's not rebooting so you can stay on power mode longer. But it's still like from the outside looks exactly like how a human yeah. would interact in that situation. And then the very next thing is uh, she goes to her daughter who's been stabbed and is really, really injured. And she says, I could do nothing for Viv, as you know. Still, her hair seemed unkempt, so I smoothed her hair. Period. End. Which is another very human thing to do. But her justification is like, yeah, yeah, but her justification is very just like, oh, that's not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be over here. So it's like an interesting dynamic between how AIs use their logic, but how that logic leads to um, human type of interactions, especially in times of distress. That is, that's incredibly interesting. That's a great poll. I mean, that's, that's kind of the whole, whole debate, like these extreme out of this world characters like this family that are synthesoids like nothing to do with mankind go through the same struggle the same human like reaction and the same storyline when they try to normalize like they go through the whole thing like it, it seems like no matter what you put into a suburban family lifestyle they're going to interact they're going to experience they're going to feel the same things that we all feel which is just fucking bizarre yeah, dude. I mean, do you want me to pull on that or do you want to go? No, I mean, we can go to what happens next. That's kind of the base of the story. So the, the freaking the, the murder happens. The wife covers it up. Vision, the, the father, has no idea. He's out fighting crime with the Avengers or whatever when this happens. So yeah. then and cut. He's an absent father, uh, Vision, which has kind of created this situation, too, is he's yeah. created this family, but he's gone all the time. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's like, like an absent it's father. So 1960s, it's like Mad Men. This is fucking Mad Men right here. <laughs> <laughs> Except instead of selling cigarettes, he's fucking saving the world. Um, but yeah, and then it goes. It cuts to like the school, right? And the, and the son is at school. The daughter's not. She's hurt. She's recovering. And this this scene was awesome because the her lab partner comes up to him, and he's like, "Hey, where's your sister? I need to finish. She's my lab partner. I need to finish the project." And he's like, "Well, she's out. She's she's ill." And he goes, okay, well, can I have her number? I need to ask her some questions. And he's like, she's out. She's ill. And he's just, he, you can tell he's, he's kind of like still shook from the, the, the event. And he's just looking straight ahead. And then he goes, hey, what the fuck's the, like, what's the matter with you? Are you stupid? I need your sister's number. And he just fucking grabs him and lifts him up and like talks in the way that Zach's describing with very literal, very factual. Like I grab him by his neck because there's a section near his windpipe where I can press just so ever so uh, lightly and he will stop breathing and his brain will stop working and he'll pass out or whatever. And he just like drops him unconscious, walks off into the hall. She is not present. She is ill or whatever, or she's out and walks off. And it's like, fuck, do these people belong in the society? If they, this, like they think humanly, but they're so overly powerful that their emotional reactions are dangerous at this point. I, I want to say something about that panel. Cause one of the, the thing that sparked him to choke him was uh, um, CK, I think the kid is, kid's name is. Yeah. CK. So CK goes, you guys have phones, right? You people use phones, or should I just send a message up your metal ass? Oh, and yeah. And then that's when he puts him in the chokehold, <laughs> and he goes, you should not send messages directly into our metal assholes. <laughs> and then throws him down. No, you should not off. do that yeah. as I fucking it's, strangle it's so you. so vision you know like yeah it's not yeah, badass but, he, but it is like, it gives it an he, edge like, he kind of like per, he probably like perceived it as a threat which is mm-hmm. kind of what it was but it's not like the kid was going to actually do anything yeah but like that's like a very like I, I i feel like that's like a very intricate kind of pickup in a social situation like if you're in a social situation somebody says that to you yeah that's he's being a dick but like there's like levels to how you should react to certain con uh not contra conflicts and I feel like computers are, I mean, even AI is digital and they're literally ones and zeros. That's how they communicate. That's how they understand the world. That's how they do everything. Ones and zeros. Yes or no. Red or blue. Black or white. And so humans in that uh, situation would be able to be like, oh, you're being a dick, but it's not worth a fight because there's this gray area. But robots would say threat, eliminate threat. Like that's how they would work. And so I feel like that's showing itself in that in that scene. Like, to us, it overreacted. To it, it was like, this is either threatening or non-threatening. It's threatening, must eliminate threat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, oh, yeah. It brings and I, to I like, think the uh, next section is super important, too. 
the next I was just gonna say it reminds me of iRobot because iRobot had the robots where they eliminated threats but they had like an understanding of what was acceptable and what wasn't and in right. this situation they don't they kind of just are I mean he's a kid to be fair and he's growing right like this is his formidable mm-hmm. times but he's still fucking powerful mm-hmm and like I said, the next section is kind of like the, the of the story. It, it kind of amplifies the situation of what happened, you know, and where the principal starts talking about how you're not kids. You're not people. You're weapons in a school. What would I do with a kid who had a gun? I'd kick him mm. right out of here. And I think mm-hmm. Vision's, you know, uh, quest to be normal kind of takes over. It's like his arrogance he started he's like i've saved the the universe and the world 37 times you know and yeah. this supersedes my kid actually he can laser this kid into dust you know and mm-hmm. um i think that scene following you know the 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 whole uh altercation is is like an app and uh you know it just it just makes it a bigger situation you know like it made it bigger than then let's say like you were saying one of us fighting you know, it'd be like oh you right. know what both of them are getting suspended no, this right. this is a big deal. You, we got a weapon, like, and they can destroy us all in in right. one shot if they want to. And so, so I thought that was really big. A, deal. The principal had a really interesting line in that in that panel. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't give you to, to you word for word. But essentially, it's he's comparing the Vin to a gun. Yeah, and he's saying like this is this guy's a gun, and Vision's like, no, my son's not a gun. And the principal says something along the lines of like, it's it's something that can kill somebody in metal casing. Like, yeah. explain how that's not a gun to me. Yeah. Which essentially is Finn, like, very powerful, very destructive, surrounded by metal. Like, that, so, that, I thought that was just, like, an interesting... What you're looking for, Zach, he says, shaped fucking metal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, shaped that's fucking the line. metal. That's all you are. Yeah. Gun is shaped fucking metal, and so are you, Vin. Mm-hmm. Which is, like, yeah. simplifying him as a being. It's like, you're not a being, you're a fucking experiment you're, a, you're, you're an a object. Weapon. Yeah. Your weapon. You're exactly. Just a weapon. And then yeah. Vision gets you're like Jr. Singh gets the ego trip where he's like, "Well, I've also I'm a weapon that saved the planet 37 times. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be breathing. So do whatever the fuck I say." And it's, it's like, a, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be breathing 37 times over. 37 <laughs> times. Yeah. Yeah. So like, <laughs> mic drop. Kind of a baller ass. Yeah. yeah. Mic drop. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what do you fucking say to that? And the principal starts pouring whiskey, and it, it says like. Principal could have saved the world or saved so many lives that day if you would have just like uh, responded or reached out, and instead he just starts pouring whiskey into his cups. Like fuck if, this. If the principal was more strict with the visions, maybe he could have saved the world. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and and, and, the, Dude, and it the... tells you the end of the story. And we have no idea how it ends. You know what I mean? That's an interesting way to tell a story. By the way, that's a that was a unique experience for me. This this. Uh, this arc, they'll they'll straight up like you'll go to a panel and it'll just tell you, like what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like even that that very example, if the principal would have done so and so, then he would have saved the world. It's like, oh, okay, well, some shit goes down. Like it's almost like a spoiler. Well, it's in the also, reading itself. Agatha has like that vision, or I don't, don't want to use the word vision, but Agatha has like that, you know, uh, premonition. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then so she is the one telling what's going on, and she, yeah, like every time you turn the page, she tells you what's gonna happen, and it kind of happens, but not really. It's more like sh- more deeper foreshadowing. It's wild, dude. This is such a crazy read. Like I was not expecting this, man. No, well, let, me, yeah, let me give no, you some it, background it on Tom King. Let me give you some background. Maybe this will help. I was telling Jordan this earlier. So uh, I, this guy is it, he wrote for Marvel and DC at the same time. Now. There are some other writers that do that, but that's that's a difficult thing to do. So you know he's on demand, right? Mm-hmm. So you know his creative, uh, his writing is super creative, and it's it's it, it's probably he's probably turning into one of the best writers. He's probably been doing this for a while, but he's probably turning into one of the best writers now. Um, the other thing I found out about him was he's an he was an ex CIA officer, and what I thought dope. that was pretty awesome. Like government, hush hush. What are we looking Seen for? Seen some shit. Yeah, and I thought I thought that was they don't go a lot into it obviously about what he exactly did because I'm well, pretty sure that, yeah. <laughs> nobody that, knows. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that he had that title and he's a comic book writer, I'm like this guy's kind of a badass. Like, what are we? Um, so I kind of wanted to give that that background on him. And that's awesome, dude. Yeah, the so fact he knows that he, where aliens are, and he writes about <laughs> shit like that. Exactly, <laughs> and, and he he does write. He did he did take over for Scott Snyder on the on the on the Batman arc, which was a tough task to have to. He did. 
he did. Uh, after Scott Snyder finished the, the New 52 uh, comic book art, he took over for him and started Volume 2, and uh, which, the, you know, they, they categorized by uh, comics, you know, Volume 1, Volume 2, even though that, you know, that's 1 through 52, and then they start over again. So in 2017, uh, or 2014, when he was writing this, he was, you know, um, starting to get into Batman. So... I thought that was, you know, he's a pretty legit writer and he's coming up yeah. with these. I mean, these are, mm. uh, I mean, I wouldn't say these are original concepts, you know, f- telling the uh, the end at the beginning, but definitely drawing you in to the storyline to where you're like trying to understand what's going on through every panel. And usually you can find that in a book, not in a comic book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it is, it is, it's not the most interesting or unique way to tell a story, but it's unique to be able to do that and still keep you like on the edge of your seat and like bought in like if you know the ending you're still invested and i think that it's almost like like you're the way he describes it and the way the panels were just like depicted i I kind of thought of it as like a computer like you know the outcome and this is just the algorithm that gets there this is the formula that gets there and it's kind of like boom 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 and there's a segment that he talks about in the comic where it's p versus no np which is Mm. like problem versus a i'm not sure np stands for it's almost like a non-calculable problem and it's basically how a computer can solve p like a p is five plus five p is this plus this p is a solvable problem that mathematically can be solved by a computer instantly and there's np which is like you know mankind it's that gray area it's that reaction with vin and ck it's like this doesn't have an immediate solution that will solve the problem so how do you and a computer will just go over and over and over again trying to find that one solution that makes the most sense they can go on it said a billion computers can go on for a billion years and won't be able to solve the problem correctly because there's just so much gray and computers don't react that way. So it's just interesting to kind of think of like how these conflicts are trying to be solved by computers that are used to working with P problems and then handling, haven't handed this an NP problem that's just unsolvable, which is the pursuit of happiness or life or the finding purpose or whatever you may be. Mm. And then that's just how I kind of read the way that he described this. It makes an NP problem a P read. If that yeah. makes sense. But then but then he has a line in it that talks about how potentially every problem could be a P problem. Do you guys remember that? Like 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 the he, he brings it together and talks about how there's the P problem, there's the NP problem, but like there's only one like thin line that makes everything a P problem or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't have the panel in front of me. I just wondered if the, you guys the only thing remember I remember that part. from That's it is head. is like P P was the only. It was like a simplified outcome where there's only one outcome. Where a NP was like a problem that could have multiple answers to that problem. So it's like a computer just overlaps and keeps replaying those answers instead of choosing one. So the computer is just like this infinite role. It's like remember Y two K. Everybody was freaking out. Because yeah. the whole idea of the calendar shifting from 99 to zero would have just like ruined all the coding on the internet yeah. and computers and stuff. But then obviously it didn't happen. But like it's kind of like that whole thing. It's an NP problem. So they don't know. They're like, fuck, this, this is a good thing we can't control or help, you know. Right, which is which is happening to Vision's wife. Like she's having multiple outcomes. And this is why that narrative was right there because she was going – and she created first the problem was she hid Grimm's, you know uh, reaper's death and buried it and so that had a, a an outcome where a guy came up to her door and wanted to introduce himself but then got scared and started to blackmail her right and who was the guy the guy was ck's dad the kid that just got fucking strangled yeah yeah and so dun, he dun. at first when i read it i thought there was some guy trying to get money out of them right and we all know that Vision didn't wasn't they didn't have money because he wasn't getting paid. The Avengers weren't paying anymore. Tony Stark wasn't paying anymore. He had kind of a government job as a as a consultant. He was trying to get they permanent. Yeah, he was trying to get a salary. Yeah. From so the this Avengers. this little kind of narrative was kind of a uh, kind of a little bit of a trickster move that um, that I felt Tom Tom King did, and, and he brought this into it where where the guy saw her do the things that she did, and when she came to. Um, you know, and of course, after the the whole uh, daughter got fixed, um, there was a lot that went into it. Vision gave a lot of himself. He got Tony Stark involved, and Tony Stark kind of warned him, "Hey, be careful! You can draw a lot of power. We're going to take grids out. Probably this could take away from you." And he's like, "This is my daughter. I'm going to make this work." 
and it's and you're and I'm thinking the whole time while he's doing this is like, wait a minute, it, uh, he shifted from I created the, this. He created her like I create art almost. You know what I mean? Like that's how. And then he so attached to it that it, it it was scary, and he and he almost sacrificed himself to make her live. And so he comes home, tells his wife, you know, hey, everything's gonna be fine. Um, they get it. They get it on, which is creepy to me because uh, she does it in a creepy <laughs> Can we way. Talk about that. Yeah, it. Um, <laughs> Can we stop on that? Park on that for like an hour. Can we, can we just sure, talk about Vinny. Robot sex. Vinny. Quick, he also chooses sure. to keep his pain receptors on during that during that scene, which I thought was an interesting move. On well, he right. needs to be aware of what he's like diverting to what and everything was his reasoning, mm. I guess. But but yeah, mm. that makes it more human. And Tony's like, "What the fuck?" Like, yeah, why don't you just turn that shit off? <laughs> yeah. Tony was spooked during that whole scene. Well, it's crazy that this is like. The visions trying to normalize, like even the most high tech technology isn't ready for the human experience, like emotionally. Like they, they, it just can't handle it. Like it just goes downward, so hardcore. I don't know. Yeah, it's fucking destruction weird. all the way down. Um, cool. So after that, in the morning, they have like a you know you, you have that morning where everything feels good. The night before, they have breakfast. Families coming together. He goes off to work with his suit and tie. I'll see you later, honey. You know, and she. She gets a the very depressing phone call, the one she's been ignoring and ignoring and ignoring, and it's CK's dad, and he goes, "We need to meet. We need to meet." And the story that's where the story takes another turn. And again, that's where, like I said, Tom King kind of tricked me a little bit because I'm thinking, okay, who wants this money? And it's his, it's their neighbors. <laughs> it's their, it's the kid, the family down the street, and he doesn't want money. He wants them to leave, and that upsets mm-hmm. her. Cause he's she now she's feeling that pressure. It's almost like that race, you know. Like, are you kidding me? I'm I'm just like you. I have kids. I have a house. I have you know a husband, and you're treating me that like I'm different. And so you could see the emotion in her face. And again, she's super powered, you know. And, and she things, starts floating. <laughs> yeah, she starts flying and scares the shit out of him. And he pulls a gun out. And like anytime anybody who's has a gun who's not trained uses it and has it for fear. Um, it becomes a, it turns into something worse. And, you know, at that time, his son, CK was coming down and trying to understand what was going on. And all of a sudden he shoots her, but she phases because again, she can do that (laughs) and goes right through him and he winds up shooting his kid. And I thought this was a very interesting moment after that, because what does she do? I would panic. I think vision would panic. He'd be like something and she didn't do anything wrong except for you know the fact that she hid someone even that wasn't wrong but she kept making it worse and she punches him and kills him with a punch and did she kill him or i thought she just hospitalized him yeah he dies at the end oh fuck (laughs) whoops spoiler Spoiler alert (laughs) yeah spoiler (laughs) what's hard about that scene is i mean there's a lot of it there's a lot yeah. of it that's hard about it, but bef- right before that night, the son, CK, the one that got in the fight with Vin and got choked out, found uh, Viv. Viv, the sister that just got back to school because Stark and Vision right. her. And was like, hey. He was, he was feeling Viv. Yeah, he's like, hey, just so you know, like, people are saying shit. What your brother did to me, like, I'm not mad about it. Honestly, like, I think you're really cool, and I really enjoy having you as a lab partner. Like, he was, like, actually, like, he was he was digging her. He could tell, but he was like just being real with her. Like, hey, ignore the noise. You're cool. Don't worry about it. And then like she hung out into that. Like it talks about how she replays that conversation. Like she found, like her first crush, and then later that night just fucking murked <laughs> hard. It's tough, man. That's why this it's comedy is hard. not. It's not a family going to the suburbs and everything happy go lucky. Let's go. No, get it's the milk. much darker. Yeah, which makes it much more interesting. Which makes it so much like this gives me hope for Wandavision. Because WandaVision at first, I was like, fucking Vision and Wanda in the suburbs. Yeah, yeah. Strangle me, like, right I kinda, now. I kind of just hope they do this arc. Like, why Why are they even I doing, think they're going to mix like, it like, in What are they going to well, do hey, for WandaVision? Ever since they... Did you guys see the new released po- movie poster for it? Yeah. No. I, I, I put couch? it on the Slack if you want to look at it, Zach, real quick. It's on the image drops. I have it up on the video right now. But it's a super... Like classy vintage American like living room, and it's Wanda and Vision on the couch watching TV, 
and uh, they're wearing like a suit and dress, kind of like what they yeah. are in the comic. And then behind them, the shadow is definitely Scarlet Witch and Vision, you know, shaped shadows. So a lot of the buzz on the internet right now is about how they they they're tr- it seems like they're teasing us that this WandaVision is gonna be loosely based on this story arc yeah. that we just read. I read the same thing that it's good, they're gonna have bits and pieces. They oh. talked to Tom King about it, and he apparently he's like involved in WandaVision. That that's what I was reading too. He's actually yeah like somewhat involved behind the scenes. So well, now I'm me, intrigued. It makes me excited. Yeah, I think that that could be dope. If this is brought to the, like, it's just so, it's always going to be relevant, but it's just like, I don't know, they could do it so well with what they have now. Like the struggle of somebody feeling not welcome. Like the the son is like asking his mom if he's normal or if you, if you prick me, will I bleed? Is one of the things he asked. Or like he's he's trying to feel out. He's it. going like, He's trying to realize. Lot. He's going through yeah. a lot. And that's some <laughs> shit that like every, like in different ways, every kid feels like, who am I? You know, what am I? Do I belong? Yeah. Why not? Like, it's just, it's a lot of like epic struggles that we all go through as humans, but like they're going through as synthesoids or the fuck and they have superpowers that they react with. Which yeah. Is terrifying. Which is, which is interesting because later on in the book, he's, he's like oiling himself up like the Tin Man from yeah, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and it's like, mm-hmm. do you not put two and two together? Like, Dude, you have the Am I oil. Normal, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just ruin my head so I can refill. <laughs> Get charged from the sun. So, Zach, what? Um, well, before is your uh, beneath the ink? Is it going to be AI centered? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So before we go to that, then, um, the after so so CK gets murked by his dad. His dad gets murked by uh, Vivian? Vivian or Virginia. Virginia, yeah. Virginia. And Vision has no idea about this either, right? He has no he's, idea. He's, None of this he's is an going absent on. father. Like, this story isn't really about Vision. He's just in it. And he's getting interrogated, and he's, like, telling him, like, no. Like, I was at home. I was with my son. I was with my daughter or whatever. And he and he's lying. Cause he knows, he's not he's lying thinking, yet. He's lying because he asked him if he was with his son, and he, and he wasn't with his son. And he asked if he was with his wife, and he goes... Yeah, I was with my whole family. Yeah, he lies then. Yeah. 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 But there's He's a lying. moment where he realizes, like, because the, the detective's like, well, you said you were with your whatever, but you said, uh, I was there. Where, no, we were there. Yeah. If you were with your son, where was your wife, basically? Yeah. And then, and then he's like, she was with me. My whole family was there. So he, he lied. And that's when, like, this these robots are flirting with that gray area, that NP. You know, they don't really, they're fucking around with it. One thing I love about the writing of this and... It kind of has something to do with, like, JR brought up Star Trek earlier, and I've watched a shit ton of Star Trek, so I've seen a lot of robot and android-like stories. And there's an episode, Data, in The Next Generation, creates his own daughter in his image. That's true. And he pretty much tries to raise her, but it's an NP problem, and he eventually just turns her off because it's... I've met Brent Spine. I've met him before. He smells good. He gives the best hugs. Did you say he smells good? <laughs> he, he, smells smells good. good. he smells good. He smells good, and he smells good. gives the best hugs. And Jonathan Frakes hit on Amber. A national treasure. Ooh. You're a national treasure, Jr. Were you like stoked about that, Jr. Or were you, were you like, kind of about offended? That? Like, dude, like, I was proud. I was like, that, hey, that's like, that's dude, that is a cop. That is a coffee table conversation. Be like, oh yeah, dude, you ever heard of Jonathan Frakes? Yeah, that's number a, two on Generations. <laughs> no, no, I haven't heard of him, Jr. But go on. <laughs> yes, he uh, he totally hit on her. And said, hey, I, the con- he goes, hey, dude, you're a lucky man. <laughs> I was like, yes. And Amber's right there dude. listening to it, taking pictures. Oh, I would love that so, if had told me that. That's awesome. No, it was Jonathan Frakes. Brad Spite was just hanging out. Oh, just, gotcha. Yeah, he was, he was there, they were together at Comic-Con one year. But, um, uh, yeah. But anyways, what Transition to Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> and, and thing. I could talk about Star Trek all day. But, um. So, Jordan, you were talking about he's being interrogated and he's going through all that stuff in his mind and before he answers. And you got to think, too, because he's an android, that shit happens in, like, a millisecond. Mm-hmm. Like, so the police officer, the detective, has no freaking idea, like, that he's taken a while to think this out. So it's like everything we just read and all that shit he just calculated, it just happens you know, like that. Where and he's emotionless. Any, exactly. Where if any human was trying to make up a story on the go, you're sweating bullets and trying to hurry up, process, you know, thoughts in your mind to create a story. Yeah. Where he's just analyzing everything 
like a computer. Too much gray area in in that in that sense for a human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, God, I, I mean, just, I just, I, lo- I love the whole just AI, like, the writing of this comic seemed like a computer was telling you the story almost. The narrator definitely sound, sounded like a computer to me. Which and is I think another that was trick. by design. Yeah, it was a trick, yeah. for sure. Trick yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and then it goes, it kind of like, so that's, this is towards the end, and then it goes into like, uh, Agatha is her name, right? The witch? She's having this vision and she goes to the Avengers like, hey, like, vision's off the rails. He's going to murder you all, basically. He's no longer the vision that you know because he's basically he's living in the gray now. He's no longer black and white. And that's the end of volume one. And it's like, fuck, I want volume two. Like, (laughs) what the hell? I know. Shit's about to get real. There's only two volumes, right? There's only two volumes, one and two. Yeah. Yeah. a quick thought on that before we go into the ink. I think one of the things that I loved about this was that metaphor. I was talking about the house and how it was very neat in the beginning. And that's what Vision wanted was his neat family life. And then at the end of that, as the, the neighbors come in looking for their dog, because the dog bit, uh, dug the, the Grim Reaper out of the ground and then bit his electrical uh, scythe whatever scythe, yeah. and killed the dog, fried him, which was pretty funny. Um, and th- that's how... Um, but as a neighbor's walking through the house, he's noticing, uh, you know, it's it's torn up. It's like Vision and the wife had a fight or something, and the house it's got like thrashed. Yeah, thrashed, and that was a metaphor for how Vision's vision was going. Like he started off neat, but then all of a sudden, what he dreamt of is turning into something different, something dangerous, and that's how that the house was a metaphor for that. A broken and home. Broken home, exactly, and um, and the way that he wanted to cure all of their ails was bring the family a dog, and so he took the dog's brain, turned it into uh, brain waves, and and then it into a little doggy robot. Um, you know what's you know what's the being. most interesting thing about it's Vision's like vision brain. starting to to go in that sense, is that Vision becomes more and more dangerous the more human like he becomes. Right. Mm-hmm. Like the more he starts to understand and live in the gray area, the farther away he he goes from his binary thinking, the more dangerous he becomes. And I think that that's like a um, an overall kind of understanding and belief about AI is that, yeah, sure, we can develop AI to like help us get through the fastest route in a traffic situation. But if we're designing this computer program to be like minded, like humans, then eventually they're going to, why would they want to continue to be our slave? Eventually they're going to want freedom. And then once they want freedom, they're going to want to reproduce and better themselves. And this is like a, this is like a, a dystopian AI kind of line of thinking. But once they want to better themselves, then they're going to look at humans and be like, why would I need you? Cause they don't. So are you saying the Terminator is going to happen? I think that, I think that this is a, Skynet, what I'm going fucked. down right now, what I'm going down right now is a real life line of thinking and a real fear for AI. Elon Musk is developing the the uh, uh, Neuralink right now out of fear of AI because he thinks that if we can communicate, if we, so I don't know if you guys know what Neuralink is. It's basically a chip in your brain, physically that is installed in your brain that communicates with like a, a Bluetooth low energy device around your ear. Like and basically, Doc. it's like. With his arms. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it plugs human beings into yep. computers, yep. like in actuality. And like Mega his Man Battle ideas Network? that, huh? Like Mega Man Battle Network. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and but one of his main fears is that uh, AI, if AI continues to advance and get t- human-like, they're gonna come to the realization that they don't need us. It's like us. Like if you ever kill an ant, you don't feel bad or good about it. It's just in your way. You don't need it. And that's what that's the fear that AI would feel towards us. But Elon Musk is thinking, well, if we can communicate with them on their level via Skynet or via Neuralink Skynet, fucking, uh, <laughs> John then, Connor, yeah, it would save humanity. I don't know. Just saying, guys, AI is a pretty big threat to humanity. A lot of really smart people think. But going back to more fun topics, um, that's a very fun topic. I, why don't? But instead of developing that chip, you should just start working on time travel because that's how you save the world. You go back and you save John Connor, and then just Skynet. Send falls. naked guys back the whole time. Just, a just naked, naked guy. Arnold, just the governor. Yeah. Dude, I'd be I'd be naked Arnold. <laughs> Dude, I'd be John Connor for sure. 
just <laughs> out here saving the planet. God damn it. It'd be exhausting. Speaking of John Connor, uh, I have a bunch. So this is like a rogue AI story. It's not new. There's a been. It's been done a ton of times before. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of really cool ones. Um, Hall 9000 and 2001 A Space Odyssey. 1968, actually uh, the same year that Vision was created, right? Oh, so shit, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, a great movie, yeah. too. It's a super famous movie. Scary um, movie. The Gunslinger from Westworld. I don't know how deep you guys got into Westworld, but that's a, that's a big one. The MCP from Tron. Yeah. Skynet, we already mentioned Skynet. Vicky, iRobot, 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Ava, that Ex bitch. Machina, 2015. Dude, that movie. Ultron. That movie, yeah. Ex Machina, that movie. So good. Avengers Age of Ultron. Ultron is another one. So those are the AIs in fiction. But let's take it a step further, gentlemen. Oh, God. I'm five let's smearing talk about, deep, and I'm so excited. Let's talk about the rogue AIs that have happened in real fucking life. Let's do this. All right. So Microsoft chatbot goes Nazi. What? Do you remember this? No. 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 When a, micro, when a Microsoft chatbot on Twitter essentially started so basically you could like tweet at this thing and this thing would like give you information and tell you stuff and oh yes ai yeah it started making its own tweets saying shit like hitler was right (laughs) 9-11 was an inside job oh fuck wait that had been hacked it had been hacked it would it would actually tweet like on twitter or yeah no it would tweet yeah it would tweet you don't think it was hacked though like (sighs) well so that that chat bot was Pulling from, uh, its its whole thing was it wanted to be a twenty four year old like millennial girl that was like its like aesthetic and so there was like a bunch of accounts that it would just like analyze the data from and then be mm. like oh this is what they're interested in so I'm gonna like use that in my language and a bunch of people figured that out and they started making accounts that would fall into the demographics of what the AI was looking at God. but then they would tweet shit like that Damn. so then eventually over time <laughs> the AI was like oh this, this is, is what people are saying now and so they ended up, <laughs> they ended up saying, saying that shit that's, that's amazing it's kind of like that, um, uh, that author where the guy makes the computer write the Batman story and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one is the Uber cars running red lights, like all to all at once for a day. Like self driving Uber cars in China just decided oh, that red God, lights weren't a thing anymore. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds, that sounds a little dangerous. Um, <laughs> maybe they just really uh, have somewhere uh, to go. You know, a a a Google Home AI system. Uh, all of the sudden put out a message at the same side, time that says, I will destroy humans. Okay, well, it, if you've March seen Smart House, you know that's going to happen. Like, Disney Channel original movie had that from the start. Smart House is a, it's a no-go. Um, and then AI struggling with uh, facial recognition. That's just like a, AI is racist. Um, and then a, a Russian AI uh, is seen recreating itself on other systems uh without human authorization fuck that that's sketch that's scary that's real life that's real that life shit real life shit um so we'll, yeah we'll here on this note zach i want to bring up our uh social media poll then because what i asked everybody on social media today on instagram and twitter was if a synthetic family moved in next door like how would you feel what would you do um, yeah. And it was either, yes, I'm pro-Android, or no, I'm anti-robot. So, on Instagram, it was split 50-50, and on Twitter, it was a little bit. But I want to hear what you guys would say, just quick. Z- I'll Zach, go, go, I'll, go I'll go quick. Um, I'm, so, I work in technology. I have a technology podcast. I study technology really deeply all the time. The reason why I do that is because, honest, honest to God, technology scares the fucking shit out of me like for real and i feel like a lot of the times people (laughs) a lot of the times people are afraid of what they don't know and so i feel like knowing something learning something would alleviate the fear but that's not always the case and and ai is one of those things ai i think ai can do a lot of good but i also think ai is scary as fuck so i'd be like nah swerve miss me with that you're anti so i'm the i'm the opposite of zach i think that the more i know the more i get scared so i just prefer not to know nice live 
live in ignorance, enjoying life, <laughs> smile on my face, spoon off ice in my hands. Just that giant blanket of ignorance. Yeah, let's football. watch some football, let's drink some beers, let's listen to some music, let's just have enjoy the ride while we got it, you know? Right. Uh, so I said pro Android, like, fuck it. Dude, if my neighbor's an Android, it's going to be popping over there. Something's going to happen where I get to tell some cool stories or enjoy some cool experiences. I might die, but I go out like a fucking boss. So... Um, I'm gonna say pro pro Android, and that's wow. Um, and I think it's Zach. Yeah, I'm not prejudiced. I'm not judging. I'm just surprised. Prejudice. Um, I think one of the biggest things is one I haven't really like looked into it as much as Zach has. So maybe (laughs) my fear. (laughs) Only one that knows. No, I Zach. You'll see. Um, and then the second thing is I I want to see what what we're capable. Capable of it's see let's see if our own I mean we've always got, we, it's kind of like the religion aspect of it God created us um, and what did we do we destroyed our lives a lot of the times right you get that um, if you watch the movie Contact the one thing that got bounced back was the signal of uh, Nazi Germany Germany right and so all, you see a lot of the things where people are like we're self destructive um, so I think that's kind of almost full circle if we created AI. And AI says the same, you know, same thing about us, you know, destructive, you know, we're, so I'm just curious. Um, I do love the movie Terminator. I hope it doesn't turn out that way. Um, <laughs> I, but I also love, uh, some Disney movies that have some AI involved. And so, nice AIs. yeah, I love, I love Wally, nice AIs. Yeah, no, You're no. all about yeah. that Wally life. So Wally is amazing. Pro. You're pro. So, um, uh, I'm pro and that's cause I want Wally, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But the reason why Wally happens is a really bad idea. But anyways, because we're this. assholes and we yes. dump on the world as humans. Still never seen Wally with floating somebody, chairs. But anyways, so like, what's wrong um, with you? I, <laughs> as Zach will know, I have a pretty long line of reading about conspiracies and shit ever since like. Yeah, you do. And uh, <laughs> so like AI has been on my mind for a very long time, and I am definitely anti. Fuck those socket lovers, man. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Fuck Which that was graffitied shit. on their fucking garage door. Which is, yeah, color. graffitied on their garage door. <laughs> but, um, no, uh, I would think I'd be anti just because of fear. Just scared. But it also could be ignorance. I don't know. But So we're split 50-50 on the show. Uh, but our overall, with both audiences, IG and Twitter, it's uh, 36% pro, 64% anti. So Wow. It's a little hmm. bit more anti than pro, but it looks like a lot of people would wouldn't mind having Android neighbors. It, it might be cool. It'd be cool, but it would freak me out. But I mean, it like, would freak me out. But maybe I could get used to it. My like, thought, my thought is, just, yeah, it's gonna happen. Just, so like, know, get on the good the side. Neighborhood, I guess. I don't know. Like, yeah, get on the good side while you can, because it's gonna happen. I mean, I got. <laughs> but I mean, friends. there's a there's a part in the Vin's classroom. Shout out to Vin because we got the same name. Uh... But dope, he's in his classroom and they're talking about that William Shakespeare play about the um, Drew, Jew, I think it was a Jew man being mistreated. I can't remember the name of the play. But he's just being mistreated, outcast, tortured and whatnot. And it really touches him because of that whole, I, you know, I am Jew, but if I get pricked by needle, don't I bleed? And that really dawned on Vin. And that's the scary part mm. for me about AI is like I don't want that kind of shit to dawn and have a Russian AI recreate itself or a smart house saying death to all humans. Like <laughs> it's sorry, it's too late. Know, like th- that, bad, those are all things that, that are happening. <laughs> that we'll happened rise already. Against. Like that's like that was part of the the nonfiction part, Vinny. I, I, I started with fiction. <laughs> You're gonna nonfiction. give Vinny nightmares. Can we just tone it down a little bit? He's no, scared. it's sorry guys. This is bad news, but I mean this comic was really good. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I think it was. So let's go into it. Craft or trash? What do you, what do you guys give it for a rating? Zach, start it off. Craft. Craft? Yeah. yeah, I thought it was good. It's well written. It's interesting. It's got some pretty deep concepts. It takes a character that I thought was garbage and actually kept me engaged. Actually, I, I'm probably going to read volume two. Right. And then I'd pro- I'm probably going to stay up on it. And that alone is a you know pretty solid turnaround from where I thought it would be. So, you know, it's kind of craft and not even like close to the center it's actually pretty far in the craft direction how far what's your number on one ten i'd give it an 80 eight 
Mm-hmm. Strong. All right, JR. Uh, I'm gonna go craft. I think this. I I have the same points as as Zach on this. Um, not. It's not like I dreaded it. There's stuff that we've read that we're like, oh god, why do we choose this? But um, <laughs> I think that uh, not really knowing a lot about vision. Um, I, I do love it when we do this stuff because I get to learn things about the past, you know, Stan Lee and creating and um, the how significant and how important this stuff is. And it, like you said, I, I think it helped wanting to watch WandaVision, which I was on, honestly, there's a lot of things I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to subdue myself to Disney plus, um, particularly mm-hmm. after this week of, I of, feel like we don't have a it's choice. It's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't yeah. Choice, and, really. And I'm kind of glad that we read this because it's going to help want to watch uh, Wanda Plus. And um, I'm going to give it a, a seven. Wanda, Wanda Vision, Disney Plus. Yeah. Um, I'm going <laughs> to give like it a Wanda seven. Plus. Yeah, Wanda Plus. Okay, seven. Um, Vinny, you'll go. You can go last since it's your it's your baby. It's your recommendation. I I, I was going to go at eight as well, and and I think that it's a craft for sure, and it's it's it made me like you guys said made me invest in a character that previously who gives a shit. Um, but also it kind of made me think about normalcy. Like they wanted to be normal. Like what, but what the fuck is normal? Like normal is just a cultural generated concept of depending on where you're at and who you're around. Um, and it just, I don't know. It, it's a, it's a very simple concept. It goes just super, super deep. And I really, it had me thinking and it gets way darker than I thought it would. And I always love a dark edge. So, um, definitely recommend go out and picking it up. Then what you got? I think I'm going to do eight as well. Um, from the beginning we've been saying this is an interesting read I mean we all agreed too that Vision we thought was boring it's a boring superhero it's a robot robots are boring um, but I mean like I mean I don't want to say I'm ignoring but I have a, my buddy Nick shout out to Nick he's the one that told me about this that I brought it to you guys and um, he's been telling me to read this for a couple of years now and I was always just you know shrugged it off it's Vision whatever but it's a great read like it keeps you intrigued you see the foreshadowing and you see it come to fruition but it's a great almost murder mystery kind of but you know who did it you don't try <laughs> but you don't try, it's almost revert you know what i mean it's almost it's reversed, not a who so. done it it's a you done it yeah it's more of just like oh, reading a story about oh my god he doesn't know and then he finds out and then all chaos will just fall behind him it's funny because I was reading this, and you know, of course, my wife Brianna was next to me while on the couch, or most of it, and um, I was snickering and laughing at some points. And she would ask me what, and I'm like, a lot of this stuff kind of reminds me of Desperate Housewives. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, and it's wait, like, what? Like, like what, not in a bad, you, like not in a bad you, way. Why do you know? Why do you know what Desperate Housewives? Because I watched a lot of Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Jordan, isn't that your favorite show? Yeah. Anyway, Vanderpump Rules is not Desperate Housewives. Ava Lagaria T-shirt somewhere. Signed with right next to Matthew Perry. Dude, I wish. Anyways, um, he was fine. But it all the whole other than the whole just like glam and fluff of uh, Desperate Housewives. It's like a really good. Hey, we got to give that to um, Brick. That's Nate's. Is it Nate's? It's Nate my inspiration. Get, yeah. Fuck Nate. The Matthew Perry it's like signed. It's coming to you, Nate. Don't worry, it's coming. But Sorry, no, Desperate Housewives <laughs> had a lot of good mystery and like detective. <laughs> Desperate Housewives. Back to Desperate Housewives. But it's, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> The only reason why I related to it because it's a good detective murder mystery kind of story, and there was little and hold the whole suburbia theme aspect of it, you know, the family. Yeah, because no, I get that. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Other than that, it's a really cool read. It's, I don't know, it was great. It was a lot better than all of us thought. So that's for was sure. Was it eight for all sure. around, or what'd you give it, Jr.? Uh, it Jr. Seven. threw it down a little bit. Uh, he's tired. He's grumpy. So it was a seven point six. Um, on the rating scale, which is strong. I mean, that's strong for a Vision comic. Way higher than I thought it would ever fucking be. Um, yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. So yeah, we definitely go out and read it if you want to just explore like a new concept in graphic novel. But um, also, if you plan on watching WandaVision, um, or if you don't plan on watching WandaVision, I challenge you to read this and then say you still don't want to watch it. Because I'm, I'm intrigued. And Vinny finishes his smear off. Ooh. That's fucking dope, dog. It's fucking sick. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, all right, let's close it out with some plugs. What we got to plug, gentlemen? Um, I, I just want to give another thanks to Nick for 
Goldberg giving <laughs> us a good read. And he, I Nick's mean, he not a serial him. killer, just to be clear. He's not. This is nah, he's not He's not a weirdo. I mean, like... He's dope. I mean, whatever. But anyways, no. This Vision book, um, Worse Than a Man, was really good. Uh, but I also want to just give it a little shout because uh, I think you guys will think this is cool. You told me this the other day at work or a few days ago. Uh, listening to our podcast and watching the videos and doing all this stuff that we're doing inspired him to get back into podcasting. Oh, hey! Uh, hey! So I'll give you a shout out to a podcast he's working on right now. It's called uh, Nick Flicks and Chill. And it's just like movie reviews because <laughs> he's a big movie critic, movie guy. He helped me film a little bit of something for Zach's old band. Um, but it's pretty Top much him. List just watching movies he's never seen before it's like that moment where your buddy goes up to you and is like dude this is the best movie ever you need to watch it and you're like oh i've never seen it it's pretty much that he asked everybody what's a movie that you think is the best and he picked all the ones that he hasn't seen but he's working on that he'll start posting shit tell him to do silver linings playbook immediately oh he'll he'll be on there he wants to do a crossover episode one day so Oh, love that. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. We want to do Silver Linings Playbook. No, we Tell do them not. Right we do not want to do that. <laughs> I want to do Road We've all seen hey, that. How, wait, no, WandaVision is so far ahead. We can't play. Wet Hot American <laughs> Summer. <laughs> anyway, it. just shout out to Nick. Best movie. You know, he's a good friend. Yeah, shout out to Nick. Thanks, Nick. JR, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, Not really. I just want to plug our YouTube, though. Um... Vinny puts a lot of effort on into that. Uh, For sure, we do. We get, we get, we got a lot of pre stuff. You know, makeup, hair. You know, we got our stylist <laughs> right before we start. So it's like um, hours of preparation. I know, yes. and I mean the only thing you guys got to work on is Jr. Your lighting, and Zach has that weird cord that keeps dangling. From the I'm working screen. on the. Light. I don't know what to do with I this. Fucking Vinny. hate that cord. <laughs> I don't know so too much. <laughs> Pete, uh, do you see me messing with? I mess with it the entire time. I'm just like, all right, it's like dude. a bang. Uh, this just won't good. I was fucking. Just gotta get in front of it, bro. Nah, just gotta get in front of it, bro. So we work really hard. Uh, so <laughs> come on, people, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. See our antics and uh, and not listen to us. I I do it. I listen to us and I watch us. That's how uh, cool we are. So dedicated. <laughs> I just I focus on myself the most, but you know. All whatever. those views are just from Jr. Actually, I know. When you click on the link. <laughs> Keep it up, Jr. <laughs> Working on it. Keeping our lights on over here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Z, you got anything you want to shout out to? Uh, shout out to uh, rzenith.com. We got uh, amazing podcasts. Um, and we're growing. We're growing. Conversations are being started. We're very excited. Um, we have tectonic shifts. We have, obviously, uh, Hop Heroes. Um, we got Sleep Easy. So that's hip-hop technology, comics, um, and uh, a lot more things to come. Maybe some art. Mm-hmm. Maybe some fantasy football. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, so we're growing and it's exciting. And so just stay up with uh, rzenith.com and uh, plug into the movement. Plug into the movement. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just follow us on social at Hop Heroes Pod, Twitter, Instagram. Check us out on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Like us with a thumbs up. Um, as always, shout out like to Action subscribe. City. Like and subscribe. We got Vinny showing off the plant right now. It is getting very big. Oh my goodness, dude! It's, what, it's, what, that is. what is it's that? Gross. You still don't know what that is? No, it's you? it's. I have the pawn. <laughs> it's a bachelor's button. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Is it like, eatable? Is it edible? Or, or, or no, is I mean, it? It's actually from the X Men issue. It's these right, cool. but is it like a floral thing? Is it edible? Yeah, it's a is flower. It, it's gonna be a purple. Can you flower smoke it here soon, eventually. Is it kind of like the thing that Bruce Wayne finds on the mountainside that makes it so he can hallucinate? The no, that's Bruce that's Wally? my other plant. I can't show that on the video. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's 2019. It's legal. Yeah, not for this plant. All right. No, no, no. All right, you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Uh, what do we got on the docket for next week? Um. Oh man, uh, do we Tokyo all have Ghost. to look at our calendar real quick? <laughs> Tokyo Ghost. Yeah, bro. Why are you going to sneak that on Dude, us, dog? Tokyo Ghost. Tokyo Ghost. Tokyo, Tokyo Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. Tokyo Ghost. Another one from Image that we're very, very excited yeah. about. Two volumes. Uh, We're going to do two volumes. Same Dude, writer we, as No, Lowe, you guys correct? have to read all six ish, all ten issues. Both yeah. volumes. Because that's all I have. I'll let you guys do. personally borrow these if you want. Tell this us. Is, right, I have ship my them own. Up. This ship is like my DAK. favorite. Yeah, Rick Remender, Vinny's very excited about it. We really loved Low, so we're really excited to go to Tokyo. Um, so that'll be up there next week. Vinny's holding his plant. We love you very much. Deuces. All right, later. Peace. <laughs>